As strange and as kind of creepy as it is out here, I'm really looking forward to the simplicity of just being out here and me in the night sky for a long period of time, just actually spending a night absorbing the night sky to get closer to the stars. Oh, this is gonna be good. It is a clear new moon Friday night, and this is what dreams are made of. I live for nights like this. I had to get out of my light polluted backyard, so I booked a one night Airbnb out in the country about 45 minutes from home. It is a lot darker out here than my backyard at home with all that light pollution. So tonight I'm gonna to be shooting without any filters and just collect that beautiful broadband natural colors of the night sky. So I've been browsing places to stay on Airbnb a lot lately, trying to find a dark sky spot where I can set up my telescope. I always refer to the light pollution map to see how dark I can get within a reasonable distance from my house. On top of that, I wanna make sure that there's some low horizons to the east or to the south so I can actually track an object for a long period of time. And this place fit the bill. Everything's going suspiciously well so far. Found a good spot, got plugged into the outlet. A nice clear view to the east. Polar alignment should be bang on. So it's all downhill from here. Feels really weird setting up in someone's yard that isn't home that I've never met before. So even though the imaging conditions are a lot better than home, I'm without a lot of the comforts I'm used to in the backyard. I talked to the owner about setting up my telescope, of course, and even hooking it up to their outlet outside. I just really hope I don't disturb them going in and out of the house to go to the bathroom at three in the morning kind of stuff my wife has to deal with at home. I'm also without my fearless protector out here. It feels really weird to not have him around. And just to keep things interesting, aside from the fact that, you know, I've never been out here before and I'm gonna be out here all night in the dark, there's a large wooded area behind the property, which I can only assume is full of critters that are waiting to greet me in the middle of the night. Here's a look at the gear I brought along, the Radian Raptor 61 triplet with a little guide scope on top and it's riding on the EQ6R Pro mount. I've got my Canon EOS RA camera at the back there and no filter this time, just shooting bare bones, trying to get that beautiful broadband color of the night sky. So I'm roughly pointed north right now. I could tell from my Stellarium app uh, that I'm roughly pointed north and hopefully I can make those adjustments, the fine tune adjustments to get polar aligned and up and running as soon as it gets dark out. I set up in this spot because the view I have to the east and the south is really great. So I might take a look at some stuff over here, but the plans are to shoot the Andromeda galaxy as it rises in the east high into the sky, and then ideally Orion later on. It's tough to book astro trips in advance because of course the weather can change uh, within 24 hours. So I booked this two days ago and I've been scared to check the weather ever since. I finally checked it at uh, 2 p.m. today before I left and it looks like it's going to be clear until about 1 a.m. Hopefully a little longer than that. The problem is that I see rain in the forecast starting at around 4 or 5 a.m. which means I'm going to have to tear everything down uh, in a haze in the middle of the night. So it should be an interesting night. I've brought enough warm clothes that hopefully I can just hang out here in the yard pretty well all night if I don't go stir crazy or I don't hear any freaky noises that drive me inside. 
So I have the option of going in the house to warm up and go to the bathroom, but uh, I'm going to stay out here as long as possible. As strange and as kind of creepy as it is out here, I'm really looking forward to the simplicity of just being out here and me in the night sky for a long period of time. Nothing to kind of snap me out of it watching, going inside and watching TV or anything like that. Just actually spending a night absorbing the night sky to get closer to the stars. Oh, this is gonna be good. I'm not used to having a low view to the east and uh, I can already see Mars rising. There it is there, the red planet. That's pretty cool. So that gives me a better idea of kind of where I'm oriented. I think I'm roughly pointed north. You see that little smudge in the center of the viewfinder? That is not a star, that is the Andromeda Galaxy. And if you've been reading the recent scientific reports about the outer halo of the Andromeda Galaxy and how we've already started interacting with this galaxy our own Milky Way, the process of combining galaxies and the chaos that ensues, it's almost kind of ominous to look at that galaxy in the night sky. so quiet and beautiful out here. You could hear a pin drop. So I am just uh, connected now to the Canon EOS RA and I'm going to take a look at a live view to make sure my target is centered and it is. I'm seeing it right now, the Andromeda Galaxy. I'm going to get the auto guiding started via PHD2 guiding and my little guide scope that happens to have the ASI 120mm mini guide camera. It may seem funny guiding with this short of a focal length, 275 millimeter on a robust EQ mount, but one of the biggest benefits of guiding and having a guide scope set up with your primary camera, and even at shorter focal lengths, is the ability to dither your images, and that makes just a world of difference in terms of noise in your final stacked image. So as for my imaging plan on the Andromeda Galaxy, because I don't have any filters in there, no harsh narrow band or even light pollution filters in there, I can shorten my exposures because it's letting in a lot more light, especially on this little scope at f4.5. So I've chosen to shoot three minute exposures, 180 seconds at ISO 1600, pretty conservative. So the idea is to just shoot as many three minute exposures as possible to create a good signal to noise ratio. I don't need to expose on that sensor for five, six minutes at a time to get a strong signal. Even at three minutes at ISO 1600, I might be pushing it. So I'll have to take a look at that histogram, but I think it's dark enough here where I can actually get away with three minutes at ISO 1600. That's the plan anyway. Whew, if you can't tell, it's getting a little cold out here. Dewy too, I can feel the moisture. I can feel it in my bones. Okay, I've got my first exposure came in on the Andromeda Galaxy and it's really exciting. So there it is there and to see an exposure like that, three minutes in length without a filter, uh, that's something I definitely couldn't do from home. So very happy about my choice. It's not even totally dark out yet. I'm keeping a good eye on the forecast because it still shows rain uh, and on some apps it shows rain as early as like 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock, which would be a disaster. Um, but the truth of the matter is I'm looking around and I actually don't see any clouds. A few low clouds uh, that don't look uh, too dangerous to the south, but uh, I'm keeping an eye on those. This whole experience, and, and I knew this would happen, it, it just really makes me crave living out here in the country, a country open property like this. 
Um, just being in the city, as convenient as it is, the amenities and you know, being able to walk to the grocery store and get gas and everything, I would always trade that for the isolation and the, the beauty and the still and quietness of out in the country like this. So I think I've got that planted in my head and in Ashley's head as well, that we want to, you know, eventually end up in a country property under dark skies. That's the dream for me.